I get a call and she's like, you should come home. And I was like, yeah, right, mom. I'm like, my, my flight's in a week. It's totally fine. <laughs> and then, you know, she was like, no, you should really come home. And then I was like, I got to get out now. You know? <laughs> this podcast is all about you and your journey in music. And we'll talk about your new record, which has their coolest title ever, <laughs> I will say. I saw that, I was like, wow, that's really, really creative. <laughs> so I can't wait to to hear how it all kind of came together. So um, I read that the the band started in Boston. Are you both from, from Boston? No, we okay. just went to college out there. I'm originally from uh, Minnesota. Okay, tell me about that. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I I love it. I love Minneapolis so much. Um, it's such a great place to grow up. And I think it has just a, a really strong music scene right now, especially too. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, I always say it's just because it's so cold that you have nothing else to do, but sit inside and practice and write songs. So it's, really, yeah. <laughs> There's just a really, really strong music scene out there and it's really inspiring. It's a great place to be and grow up. That's cool. How did you get into music? My dad. My dad um, played in a band all when I was growing up. And so I just, I wanted to be in his band my entire That's life. So cool. You know, any way I could, <laughs> I'd go to his sound checks. And, you know, when they let me like sound check or sound check the drums and stuff, that was like the greatest day of my life. <laughs> That's awesome. Where was he like, he did it as a profession, like professional? No, drummer, no, he's or? actually a, a software engineer professionally, but. Okay, just, but just like, loves just music, captain, loves band. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's so cool. <laughs> solid Silver. He, yeah, yeah, that was his band name, Solid Silver. <laughs> that's a solid name. <laughs> <laughs> solid Silver name. <laughs> yeah. Wow, well, what, what does your dad play? He plays guitar. Okay. So, yeah, he had been in this band since he was like 15. Um, and he always wanted to be a musician, but his mom told him he couldn't. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Now he gets to live vicariously through you. Literally, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so he played guitar. What was the first instrument you learned? I started on drums. Uh, okay. Actually, when I was like six, yeah, I landed the drum set. I was like, we got it. Like, I'm going to be a drummer, guys. Um, but I made the switch over when I was nine, when I finally had a little more of a brain to uh, <laughs> to learn how to play an instrument. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. What about you, India? Where were you? Were you where were you born and raised? I was born in um, New York. I grew up here. Uh, oh, cool. I was born in Manhattan, and then I moved to Brooklyn when I was seven. So I've been here ever since. Um, went to college in Boston, and I met Claire. Um, wow. but well, how, yeah. did, how did you get into music? Um, I didn't start music until high school. I was like a competitive gymnast for most wow. of my adolescence, like from <laughs> four to like 15, 16. Really? Uh, my yeah. five-year-old son just like literally just left to go to gymnastics camp. No like, way. <laughs> I, we just, my wife just like put, took him out the, the door. Whoa. He's been at it like all week. He loves oh, it. He's not learning anything like great, like cool, but he like loves jumping on the trampolines so and fun. you oh, know, sure. running in on the bars and all that stuff. <laughs> it's really good. It's a great camp. Mm -hmm. Um Gets but his I did, energy out for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I did that um like four hours a day, five days a week for like most of my life. Um wow. and then when I was I always was interested in music and like loved music and wanted to be an actress like as my profession um and then right before high school or like my first year of high school I got a really bad injury on my arm um and I basically just like was told I couldn't do it anymore like my arm just wasn't gonna support my body anymore whoa that must and have been devastating it was I was like oh okay because it's like your whole identity yeah you know? and your whole life you've been and my whole since life four you mean you're working uh, yeah. towards that it's yeah. crazy so oh I was kind of searching for something else to do. Um, and I was always a dancer too. And I auditioned for LaGuardia High School here in New York, which is a performing arts school. Mm -hmm. And I auditioned for dance and I auditioned for singing and I auditioned for acting. And I ended up getting in for um, singing and wow. acting. And I, for some reason, was just like, no, I want to do singing instead. Like okay. I just want something completely <laughs> new. Um, and I started learning about classical music and like having my first ever like voice lessons. And I just fell in love with it. 
um, and started writing songs too. I was always like a very emo kid with a diary and I'd like write angry poems. So that was in my, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so that's how I got into music and I kind of started fiddling around on guitar too. And my dad played guitar a little bit. So he kind of taught me like the basic shapes, like enough to like write pieces together a song. Um, so yeah, that's how I got into music. Wow. Kind of like to roundabout into, way. <laughs> sure, but to get into that uh, that high school without having any real yeah. training in vocals, that's pretty, that's really impressive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, to say that you hadn't taken voice lessons until you're in high, in, you already had odd in, I mean, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I always like sang growing up. I was very like flashy as a child. I would like make my family sit down and watch me perform, <laughs> kind of like doing like full one woman productions. Like, Amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, so was, Lydia Shore presents. <laughs> yeah, I'd, like have my sister like be like stage crew. <laughs> like hit the lights, <laughs> I'm bossing around. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool well did you both attend where berkeley or no just oh yeah, you did berkeley. both go to berkeley of we course berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> what did you go to to berkeley for claire guitar i was yeah so i got in on guitar um while i was there i studied a major called contemporary writing and production it it basically trained you to write for like commercials and, and tv a little bit Oh, cool. um, but I was always, yeah, I was always really torn between like, do I want to write music? Do I want to record it? And so that kind of seemed like the perfect pairing mm -hmm. of each. And I, I loved that major. It was super fun. Did you, how did you get like, I'm sure there's quite a process to get in Berkeley. I mean, they don't just accept anyone. Like what was your audition process? Did you have to submit like a video of yourself or like oh, yeah. show up in sight read or <laughs> it's yeah, a crazy it's audition kind of story. <laughs> yeah. So like, I mean, for me, I went to a summer camp right before I did my audition. So that was kind of nice because that was kind okay. of my audition in where they- Sure, I've, I've talked to a few people that did that. You can kind of go and kind of get a feeling for it if you- Right. Prior, yeah. okay, that's cool. So I did, so to get into the summer camp, I did a video audition. Then I went to the summer camp, they kind of saw me from there. Um, and then after that, I did I did the in-person audition. And it's, it's very much like, show up with your prepared piece. Now we're going to do some improv. Now you're going to sight read a little bit. Um, it was really scary. You know, I was terrified. <laughs> oh. I was like, this is, there's a lot on the line here. <laughs> oh yeah. Could you read music? I could luckily I had been, okay. I've been working on that. I was preparing for this audition, but if I didn't, you know, I would have been fucked. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause I, I've talked to a couple of people that like got in somehow and they said that they couldn't say it. They would just like make it up. Like, on the most, oh, like, that's so <laughs> <laughs> most guitar players can't, you know, like we, right. it's not how we're taught. It's a, you just shred. Like why need yeah, to learn a note? Like, notes, I mean, yeah. if you're a jazz guitar player or maybe something else, like, but if you just rock or you yeah, know, exactly. learn, why would you care to, to read a note you just rock out <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> so india did you go in as a vocalist i did go in as a vocalist i again like right before i graduated high school was like i don't know really what i want to do even though i'd spent four years singing i was like do i want to sing do i want to act so um, my dad is British and I have a British citizenship. So I was looking at schools over in the UK, like acting schools. Okay. So most of my college, like auditioning process, I like went over there and did it and like, Oh really? I, yeah. And then I only auditioned for like two schools in the U S and it was Berkeley. And I think Emerson, I did those two. And I was like only looking at musical theater programs and, um, I got into like one in the UK and I got into one in the US and I auditioned for Berkeley with like a musical theater song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, they were like, for some reason, I don't know why they hate it, but they do. Yeah, but- um, Oh, they I, do? They hate that? Apparently, yeah. Apparently, I didn't know that, but they I hate it enough. And, like did a full <laughs> acting performance. I'm just like, yep, this is it. Um, and I ended up getting in there. And I, again, I like, don't know what drew me to it. Like all these stories I have were like, yeah, I just went with it. But I Work. really, really like felt like it was maybe the right place for me to go. And I like had a very gut feeling about it. So I just went. Did, so did you go in as like, I guess if they don't like musical theater, is that even an option there? Like, can you be- I think in there's musical? like a musical theater club. 
Uh, you there's not like, but you can't be like a musical theater major. major. No, yeah, they don't have so I I went in there thinking I was gonna be like a vocal performance major, um, and I got in there and like kind of it took me a long time to figure out what I wanted to do because I feel like at Berkeley there's so many options. So I did like a pro music major where you can kind of combine a bunch of things and make like a mishmash degree out of it. So I did vocal performance and I did music business so I could like have some sense of what was happening and then um <laughs> later on I figured out that I really like composition and um writing for instruments and like classical instruments writing for strings so I added that to my major so that's what I did oh wow and <laughs> how did you you guys met obviously at Berkeley mm -hmm. yeah okay. how did you two meet we I so I it was like within the first month of school and I was gonna audition for a showcase called Storytellers and I like needed a guitarist and my roommate was friends with Claire. Um so I texted Claire just being like, I you want to meet up and work on a song. So we met um and worked on a song together and didn't become friends for a long time. <laughs> like we would just meet up, work on music, and then be like go your Hi. separate ways <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, okay <laughs> i think That's we were funny. both intimidated by each other we were like I'm yeah, not, yeah like, for sure <laughs> i can't be friends with you <laughs> <laughs> um and that's how we started making music together and then there was also like a a burrito place down the yeah. street this is the there reason we kept making music this is the reason we kept it. and if you You're went like, burrito day okay burrito day <laughs> If you went and played a song at like this burrito place on a certain day, you would get a free burrito. So really, yeah. That's really so that's how we started. Our that's band. cool. I'm sure it was, that line must have been long. You know, surprisingly, you would think. Yeah, not really. Not many people even at Berkeley. Like, even yeah, at Berkeley, it was like right on campus too. And <laughs> wow, like, that's, in India, they're every week. Like I would be there too, even if I couldn't play. I just make something up on the spot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool what a hack <laughs> it was it was amazing <laughs> um being at berkeley was it did you both play like obviously you played the burrito shop but did you play <laughs> out at like different little coffee shops or anything around there and was that intimidating being around you know every instead of being the best guitar player in your town now you're what you're around all the best guitar players around the world you know oh, country course, world yeah. Was it intimidating playing around these, you know, people that are yeah. all there for the same reason? I feel like it definitely changed our sound um, because most of our gigs were at house parties. Oh, okay. Weekends and stuff. And it was a really exciting environment to be in. It's but like your whole basement crowd with like a group right. of like 100 people just like packed in a basement. So it felt like very rock and roll. Like. Yeah, that is That's cool. <laughs> But the whole crowd was all people from Berkeley. So you'd like play something and they're all like, right. You know, like watching that. your every move and you're like, oh my God. They're, they're like, theoretically, that shouldn't go like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's like kind of in the back of your mind the whole time. I wouldn't put that chord there if I were you. <laughs> right, right. You really did that? Like, wow. <laughs> so I think uh, we started all, like kind of writing for that environment to like make something that's gonna be fun to listen to on a Friday night. Um, and it it wasn't like super authentic to who we were, I would say. That was kind of mm -hmm. like our first, the first ever music we wrote was a little country punk-ish, we called it. Um, okay. But yeah, it wasn't until we left Berkeley that we actually found our sound, probably for that reason of writing for the people that were there and in that environment. So did you both finish and then move? You guys, you, you both moved to New York, right? Eventually? Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I went home for a little bit right after graduation. I, I went back to Minnesota just to save up some money before moving. And then right as I was about to move, the pandemic hit. So I- Oh, <laughs> I wow, like, okay. Oh, I see, this is a wrench in my plan. So I stayed wow. in New York. Literally until um, this past January is finally when I moved out here. Wow, so it's Carnation written in at Berkeley. Yes, the first yeah. record. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you wrote? Did you record it on campus? Like, tell me, tell me about that first album. And was it just the two of you? Because you have a few other members, right? Or not so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of come and go. You know, back us up. Um, 
but they were all on it. I can't, I gotta remember where that was recorded. I think it was recorded, um, what was the it Wellspring? Was, was that Wellspring? The yeah, Wellspring there's a Boston. really cool studio like an hour outside of Boston um, that we went to, and sort of the owner of the studio basically like left us alone, basically for like a ten hour day, um, which was really exciting. So we did a lot of it there, um, and we had the other members of our band come play. So it was uh, Alexi Goddard on drums, Sylvie Chang on backup vocals. I think Emma was on yeah, bass and on we just had like a pretty small setup all um, people from berkeley all people from berkeley two of them actually went to high school with me <laughs> really <laughs> yeah um so we did that we recorded it over like a couple months like in the berkeley studios and there mm -hmm. um but claire and i wrote everything um and that yeah it feels like such a long time ago we did that i'm trying to remember <laughs> the did process you, of that did you play those songs and like push that record pretty hard when you're just at school there it sounds like <laughs> right when everything was going to happen the pandemic hit yeah so wait so carnation came out in 2018 okay so we played that a lot around boston and we didn't have like a manager or anything at that time we kind of didn't really know what we were doing so we were just playing it around boston i think we got like one really cool press write up like blindly i don't know how it happened okay um and then kind of did that and started working on garden spider pretty quickly after that and that took us like a year to put all those songs together um and i feel like garden spider was like the first project we put out that we like kind of took seriously and um liked in the end i think Maybe, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe you change your opinion on like projects over time, but like, I feel like I listen back to Carnation now. I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> was, yeah. was that when you got the manager on the second record? Yeah. yeah. So our manager is another person from high school. Um, her cool. name is Nicole Texadani. She's like the smartest person I know. And, um, she was in like my vocal class in high school and she has a really beautiful voice too but decided she wanted to go the manager route and was always like I'm gonna manage you one day that's cool and then uh kind of sort of was taking note of the things we were doing um throughout college and by the time we got to Garden Spider she was like no I really do want to manage you like let's do this and so she helped us kind of put everything together for that um which I think definitely made a big difference and mm -hmm. oh for sure <laughs> all that <laughs> yeah I mean, you have the the fuck you Heather song is over a million plays on Spotify. That's yeah, it's really crazy. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that record, it came out in 2020. Was it put out yeah. prior to the pandemic or was February. it something you had? A month. Oh, my oh, goodness. Before. <laughs> I know. It's really it, okay. it was brutal when that happened because, yeah, we were we did like a release show. It was really awesome. We had a bunch of shows booked for the spring to promote the album. And we were, yeah, we played a show up until- We just changed March our well. name too. Yeah. We oh, you weren't boyish name. prior to that? No. We, we were um, The Blue. <laughs> That's we a cool name. It was an awful name. <laughs> <laughs> it could be worse. <laughs> That's true. It was just very hard to find. Like there are like 270 The Blues on spotify oh, i could imagine and that was yeah. it's very like just kind of blank statement name like i feel like it's very very hard to find anywhere you look so i think that was a big reason nicole was like we need to change your name <laughs> like we need to do this um so we had just done that we just put out this record and we were really excited and then everything shut down a month later which was really crazy wow so you were playing shows all the way up until it shut down were you seeing any like you know, were you hearing about the coronavirus prior? And was that, like, yeah. tell me about that yeah. a little bit. We played a show March 13th. The day that like, everything shut down? Like Isn't that the, the day everything shut down? It was like, like the two, day days two days before. Oh, uh, okay. And so it was kind of quiet that night too. Like people came, but everyone was like kind of nervous. And so yeah. And everyone also, was like, this is probably the last time I'll go out. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's India, weird. It's and weird. We had food poisoning that night too. So we're like, is was, that the corona? Oh, yeah, I was my. like sick too. I was like, oh my God, this is And it. we're like, what's happening? We're like, <laughs> that was scary. It was really scary in the beginning. It was. It was really, and I was really getting calls from home. And like my mom 
so chill. Like my mom will not panic in any situation. And I get a call and she's like, you should come home. And I was like, yeah, right, mom. I'm like, my, my flight's in a week. It's totally fine. <laughs> and then, you know, she was like, no, you should really come home. And then I was like, I got to get out now. You know, <laughs> I was like panicking. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. It, it hit real. It was weird. It was, it was like, yeah, people were, it was like a thing. I remember in the beginning, I had never heard, I didn't know what it was until I saw a friend of mine post something about like coronavirus started by Corona beer. It was like some joke headline. <laughs> and I was like, what is coronavirus? Like, what am I, am oh, I confused? No. <laughs> and this was like in February. So then I'm yeah. researching it. And then it obviously, it didn't take long for it to <laughs> all kind of shut down everything. Well, I remember I mean, seeing an article in February too, being like, coronavirus is going to change your everyday life. And I was like, Pfft. Yeah, right. <laughs> right exactly. This drama for nothing. <laughs> right. Because we've never seen anything like this. It was yeah. like, okay. When it, I mean, how many other ones were there? There was like SARS was a big one or yeah, like but we Ebola. Never had to like... And it like was never anything that you'd really thought about, right? No, no. Yeah, it was really, really insane. I remember in the very beginning too, like they were saying, you don't have to wear a mask. Like a mask isn't going to do anything for you. So mm -hmm. there was that whole message too. Yeah. There's no, no, you're, you're done. You're screwed no matter what you do. Yeah, it's like, don't worry. It can travel 25 feet in the air and live on surfaces for four days, but yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah, that was the whole thing. It could live on surfaces for a long time. And then it's like, really? So if somebody touched this doorknob four days ago, I'm four days ago, gonna get it's going it. to give me coronavirus. <laughs> right. So bizarre. It was so bizarre. So, so had you gone home already, India, at this point? Yeah. So, well, the last show we did was in New York. Um, oh, and wow. I was be just back living at my mom's house, like right after college. So Claire was staying at my house here and flew out a day. I think the right, next day after, right after the show, show I was out. <laughs> and was it weird being in the airport? Was it <laughs> dead? So weird. Well, it was like, my flight was completely packed. No masks. Um, just because everyone. <laughs> of course not. Me. Yeah, they like, get no. home. <laughs> yeah. So I was, yeah, I was just in Newark in the airport there, no mask on, on this fully packed flight to Minneapolis. And I'm like, what's going on, guys? But I remember landing and opening up my email, and every gig I had for the next like five months canceled. And I was like, <gasps> I'm like, there goes all of my income, you know? Yeah. Manic starts. It was horrible. Yeah, it was crazy. I was just at my mom's house. Claire left. I was like, I had, I was nannying at the time too. And then my nannying family was like, we're leaving the city. Like, we're not going to be here. I was like, all right. Like, no, solid choice because that like, was a bad spot to be. Fair enough. <laughs> and so I was here in New York at my mom's house until July. Like I, for a period of four months, like I was just in this house, just chilling with my mom and sister like <laughs> not really going outside I think I would like go for a walk around my block but that mm -hmm. was it because it was really bad in New York it was really bad in New York it was really really bad and um it was so quiet like it's the quietest I've ever heard it there's um like kind of a major road right by my house and it, there's always cars on it and like I remember at one point in like early April I walked out and there was not a single car on the road and I was like Weird. i'm living in a ghost town it was an insane time it's it was weird i'm from san diego i my family and i just moved to nashville but um i was in san diego a majority of the time when the pandemic happened and, I, and i've done radio for 16 years and re i remember getting like a fema card my boss like shipped fema cards to everybody because we were an essential business Oh and it was God. like, keep this in your car. Like, if you get pulled over, you need to show them. I'm like, they're really scaring everybody. And there wasn't a whole lot of cars on the road. But I'm thinking the whole time, like, I'm going to have to just show them this thing. Like, I'm some, like, oh like God. I'm going to go to, like, prison for being out. I'm going to go to like, prison. This is, like, total police state. Like, what is going on here? No, it was, no <laughs> one knew what was happening. And it was so high level, like, everything was high level. Like, I remember, yeah. like, can I leave the house? Like, am I actually allowed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and being in New York too, because the whole we were watching TV, you know, news was on my house 24 seven. And yeah, all yeah. it was, was, was Cuomo on TV talking because yeah. you guys were like, it was the thick of it. I'm just watching like, oh my gosh, I can't believe like, I feel so bad for the people in New York. And then it started <laughs> bubbling up in LA a bit, but not, it didn't get the te television 
it was the all eyes <laughs> on New York, right? Yeah, it, it was. You guys must have been really terrified. I mean, we I were really. T- I feel like everyone here just retreated to their houses and like tiny little apartments and like sat here for a while and like every day at seven o'clock for a period of like three months people would like stick their heads out their windows and like clap for oh, they cheer for the, the yeah uh, and that went on for like months people would just do that that's it was cool, so though. it was really nice but also like it was a very odd like routine to be into it was like okay i've like been in my room time to stick my head out yeah. the window and clap time to get some also, air <laughs> go back in which is like if this thing travels 25 feet yeah you know, exactly that's the, risk. <laughs> <laughs> right. the guy the, the person below you is just spitting out the window yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow. Okay. How was it for you, for you, Claire? Was it equal? It was so you- so different in Minnesota. Just because okay. we had so much more space. So you could like it was actually pretty chill. Um <laughs> besides the fact where you're like, oh, if I go to the grocery store, am I gonna come back and like kill my parents? Um right. <laughs> that yeah, that's what they pretty scared. much told you. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So we're like, oh shit. But uh <laughs> For the most part, like we we had a great time. Actually, I was I was at home with my parents, and my older sister was in med school at the time, which was really oh, convenient. Yeah, you know, so she came home. We're like, you're gonna save us. We're like, what oh, we? but it was it like, are you gonna have to go back and because weren't they throwing a lot of the people in school? Yeah, as luckily, like triage kind of like <laughs> nurses and stuff. She was only in her second year, so she was like too young. Oh, that, she was just up. under the wire, at least. Exactly, exactly. So it was like, all right, we can't have you actually do stuff yet. Um, so she got to stay at home and, you know, study and do that whole thing. And, you know, I was her test dummy. So she'd be like, put up your arm like this. And then she'd have her like stethoscope. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. Um, but we, it was actually really cool because my dad and I, we have a bunch of neighbors that we're really close with. And they'd all bring up a lawn chair and we'd have little concerts on our driveway. Wow. Um, we were doing stuff like that. It was fun. They, <laughs> this neighborhood, um, they've been there like my entire life. They're all best friends and they would hire musicians to come like play and then everyone would bring a lawn chair and spread out. There was a lot Whoa. of that happening in Minnesota. The Elvis that... impersonator. And they hired an Elvis impersonator. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? But... That's so rad. <laughs> <laughs> so they made the best of it. And it was it was just nice to kind of that's be cool. family for a while. Yeah, um, type of, that's really like, wow. That's probably the coolest story I've heard yeah. <laughs> over the course of this whole thing. Yeah, people were just like, oh, we're just going to perform outside. Uh, my old guitar teacher works in um, a theater, like a musical theater. Mm-hmm. And her partner is the music director there. So they <laughs> they would have all these theater singers come and they'd back them up and they would play on their front porch and everyone would again bring up a lawn chair sit out there on wednesday afternoons and just listen to all these show tunes that's no so one else cool. had anything better to do so right it was, wow. it was really cool that way it, it people just kept performing kept going <laughs> i love that that's really really cool it was so fun <laughs> how quickly into the pandemic do you both start writing we're all going to die but here's my contribution like when did that conversation began was it like okay we're not gonna build a tour garden spider let's just keep going literally yeah we were just like well i think within a week we were like all right we'll keep writing (laughs) (laughs) there was a lot of pressure from everyone too to be like you have all the time in the world like what are you gonna make what's this needs to be the best thing you've ever made and we're like oh (laughs) really you're getting that type of pressure i I think just from ourselves like oh i guess you really because like you just said, there really wasn't anything else to do. Exactly. And, you know, you'd hear from different people too, being like, you have all this time, it's going to be a great time for art. And we're like, I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Was it hard to stay inspired? I mean, oh, how long can you look at your wall and be like, okay, and you're not really living life, so to speak? No, it was really hard to stay inspired. We, we turned to a lot of TV shows at that point like oh. tv and movies to be like okay nothing's happening in our lives like what's happening in other people's pretend <laughs> lives like that yeah. we can write about oh really i mean mm-hmm. that's smart and if you think about it really tv and, and film is somebody's life like i mean you relate to it or you wouldn't mm-hmm. be watching it yeah or exactly. you sort of relate to it in certain aspects i mean if you're watching like a 
you know, sci-fi horror movie, maybe not as much. But like, <laughs> not that. <laughs> it was a lot of like normal people like, yeah. crying. <laughs> right, right. But did the title kind of come from what was going on? I mean, we're all going to die, but we're in the room and we wrote the song. Here's our contribution yeah, to everything. Like, Here you go. <laughs> I love that title. I think that's so good. I think it's so Thank good. Thank you. So you, were you writing over Zoom? How were you guys doing this? We were mostly like sending voice memos back and forth. I think we tried to write on Zoom a couple of times and we were both just like, I don't know how to do this. This is really weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we did that for a couple months. And then in July, I kind of decided, I was like, okay, I have nothing. My dog's barking. Hold on. Oh, all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on. But let me let him out of the room. Claire? Oh, go ahead. No. <laughs> um, yeah, but in July uh i was like india like come to minnesota get out of the city you know take the leap just do it and then we can work on a bunch of music we can get stuff done um so finally convinced india to come to minnesota and she rolls up out of the airport she had i think you had four masks on like a hazmat like, suit <laughs> yeah lab goggles on lab goggles. i was like i don't know what i'm doing like, um, <laughs> And like the only one coming out of the airport, like, <laughs> like, like no oh. one else was doing that, which I was shocked by because <laughs> that's I, so funny. I can relate to that though, because when when my wife and I were thinking about moving to to Nashville, we wanted to come see it. We, you know, how much can you learn over the internet? So we're like, we really need to to come out and see what it's like. And same thing, we had two masks and a face shield, yeah. and the the plane was packed pretty much except for two, maybe two seats. And oh because we God. were like full on like gloves, <laughs> my wife sat at the window and I sat at the aisle and the seat in the middle, they're like, you know, raise your hand if somebody, if your seat is open and nobody wanted to deal with us. No, yeah. uh, they're like, oh, these two right, are, we're not all right. Doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it worked in our benefit. Yeah, I seriously. came out of New York, which was like the most high intensity place. Like everyone was taking it super, super seriously because we were all terrified. Well, and you I guys got, were in the thick of it. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> so I got to the airport. I was in like my four masks and my goggles and like <laughs> <laughs> gloves. And I go, I got off in Minnesota and people in the airport were like chilling. They were like eating in the airport, yeah. like had no masks on. <laughs> hugging like, each other. <laughs> hugging each other, like touching things. I was like. <laughs> and it was, yeah, you were on the phone too. You're like, what is happening? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Oh man. I know. I walked out of the airport. Claire was like, what are you wearing? Like, <laughs> why are you doing this? Like, are you okay? Can you breathe through all that? Yeah. You know? Claire's like, we got an Elvis impersonator at the house. Yeah, like, about yeah, it. Like, <laughs> all Claire's neighbors like greeted me when I got there. I was like, <laughs> you know, yeah. so how long were you in uh, Minnesota then? I was there from July to September. <laughs> I, oh, wow. I just stayed. I was supposed to be there for like two weeks, but then I was like, there's really no reason for me to go back. And sure. we we're just working a lot, which felt really good. Like, and it was nice to be able to like have some space after being in New York for that long. So I stayed for a long time. Like every couple of weeks, I had to ask Claire's parents, I was like, is it okay if I stay like a little longer? They're like, yeah, like, it's fine, which is really <laughs> nice of them. But I was like, are you sure? Like, stay. Stay. Like, am I overstaying my welcome here <laughs> or what? <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was on like month two and I was like, is it cool <laughs> if I'm still here? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's so, cool yes i was there really for cool. a long time we would just work in claire's like bedroom studio they had set up um and that's where we wrote we had like all the ideas for we're all gonna die uh that's but kind of fun. put everything together up there and did you guys did you both record it there like how, how yeah. did you record the record really yeah we yeah we would just record it i had um some of my quarantine purchases you know like i, I upgraded to a nicer interface i got a nice mic um mm -hmm. and then we're like all right let's just do it all here since we have the stuff and it worked out you know and <laughs> it's that sounds great it's a great sounding record and it was done in the bedroom yeah yeah all of it i think all of it except for um some drums we went into a studio claire works in and recorded drum samples ourselves just like both of us just hitting different so parts of the drum just really? to have samples to put in like if we wanted live stuff but everything else was done just in Claire's room yeah that's so cool 
And with when the record's finished, everyone's still inside. Did you have the idea of maybe not releasing it, or was it let's just get it out there? What what was the thought process? I think by the time we finished it, it was the end of summer. We drove from Minnesota back to New York. Um, came back, saw Nicole again. And so she was, she listened to everything and she wanted to help us like roll everything out. So we got it mixed and sort of by the time everything was ready, we contemplated, I think, waiting to release it till shows were going to happen, but Mm -hmm. we still kind of had no idea when that was going to be like, there wasn't really like, there were like whisperings of a vaccine, but we're like, I have no idea when that's going to happen. Right. Um, so Which rolled start- out pretty quickly. I will Which give them credit. Ended yeah. up happening yeah. very yeah. fast. Um, so we released the first song, Superstar, in February. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can remember of, now, yeah. Of this year. Um, and yeah, I just kind of kept rolling it out from then. And like, things kind of kept improving with the pandemic as we sure. kept releasing things yeah. we're like all right might as well like keep going ride this wave, ride this wave you know? <laughs> so we kind of did it all very diy like um we shot all the music videos for it with our roommate um eli edwards and we did it like around like our apartment like on the roof of our building like on the street nearby like yeah. everything just very much ourselves like had a green screen on the wall like <laughs> oh just like oh that's cool did you buy like a green tarp type thing yeah, yeah literally like, this is how we're gonna make all our content for this that's time. cool I, there's something cool about the diy you see, not having it all super polished i love that yeah 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 it was really a lot of fun i think it ended up working out really well even though it felt like every week we were like okay, let's like make something yeah, and make put it out album. soon. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the album's amazing. It's doing really well. Um, what with stuff opening now, is there hopes to, to tour the record? And now you have two albums worth of material. Is, is it going to be difficult to kind of figure out like, okay, should we play a lot of <laughs> Garden Spider or should we play more of We're All Gonna Die? Like, is that even a thought? That's yeah, totally right now what we're in it. Like literally before I hopped on this call, I was making, you know, a big spreadsheet of what can we play? What should we play? What do we want to play? Um, we, we have this thing about us. I feel like we love to just like move past all the old stuff we've released, you know? And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, let's just keep going and only play new stuff. Um, so it's, it's interesting to think like, what are we gonna grab? from each record. We always play July. I feel like that's the only one from Carnation that keeps coming. Oh, back. really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we don't really play much off of that record. <laughs> um, and then now Garden Spider, it's going to be probably Fuck You, Heather. Yeah, that's a huge Andrew. song. Yeah, yeah. Did that get <laughs> uh, like Spotify? Was it playlisted? Or do you know how that thing kind no, of bubbled that's, up? That's kind of oh. the craziest part about that song is that it's on zero never- Spotify editorial <laughs> playlist. Wow. And it just I mean, that's something going. to be so proud of. A million plus people have found it and listened to it. Right, right. It, yeah, it blows our mind every day. We're just like, why? And we like, don't know where it's coming from either. <laughs> like, it <laughs> kind of fluctuates. Like, yesterday, it got nearly 10,000 streams in a day. I was like, I feel like that didn't really start happening with that song until maybe six months or so after it was released. Like it was very consistently getting like the same amount of streams. And one day it just like popped up and we still aren't sure why. Like yeah, people just yeah. found it and really love it, which is great. Like I'm I'm so happy that it's like found its own little home for people. Yeah. What a day. Was that pretty I would imagine that was a pretty cool day to see it just jump and be like, whoa, what happened there? Yeah. Because <laughs> I think our hope was that it got Spotify editorial playlist because we never before we're going to die. We had never gotten like any <laughs> any Spotify editorial playlist. So we thought maybe that had happened. But no, we're like, what? Like, where is this coming from? Well, that's probably even cooler, right? To, to have it not because when it goes on a Spotify editorial playlist, there is this hope that it's not hope but i mean it's a good chance that it's going to get a lot of hit listens mm-hmm. right. Right. and yeah, for, for it sure. to not and just have people organically find it i think there's yeah. something to be said for that and probably i would think even 
for you both to think that's even cooler than if it did get yeah it's honestly really nice I'm like I feel like it's in the right hands like Mm -hmm. of people who really love it um I I was on Twitter the other day and I saw like a fuck you Heather um fan fiction <laughs> like people using the song to like write fan fiction for two characters and I was like wow <laughs> that's that so is cool so crazy to me that is really rad yeah so and I go ahead sorry I was gonna say it's pretty cool <laughs> very cool and how cool is it to have the cd display in Japan um, that is the coolest thing ever <laughs> like how did that come about did you have any idea like how'd you get that picture (laughs) (laughs) that is the question (laughs) um we so this record company in japan called p vine reached out to us uh a couple months ago i think right after superstar came out um asking if they we would want to like distribute physical copies of we're all gonna die here's our contribution like CDs and vinyls in Japan we're like hell yeah like let's do that um so we agreed to do that but I had no idea about the like display I like we did not know one thing about that and then we saw the picture we're like (gasps) that's cool so I would imagine Japan is somewhere you're gonna hit on this oh it'd be amazing that's a dream that's a real dream one day I hope yeah that's so cool um, what about live shows? Do you have anything? Were you able to make up any of that or? We have um, a couple things booked for our first show, I think is August. August 25th, I believe. August We're doing 25th. like a little mini tour. Um, we're heading to Nashville first, actually. Yeah. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was my next question. When are you coming to Nashville? I think August, August 25th. Is I think cool. August 25th, coming to Nashville. Then I think we're going to Cleveland and Chicago. Oh, that's um, my second favorite place because that's where my family is originally from. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know any of the venues there. And <laughs> I wasn't born there, but my my parents are both from Cleveland. Oh, sweet. I've been there a couple of times. I'm like, if we go back, I'm just going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Have you been there? <laughs> I've been there one time. Okay. But I feel I, like I think I was in it for like an hour and you can spend that's like not enough time. Days. I've yeah, been there. Literally. I think I've been there five times. Just oh, I would wow. every time I'd go back to Cleveland, I would go because it's like, why not? And right. they and they always change that top room. I'm not sure if you're aware oh, of that. Really? So there's the top room. It was yeah. John Lennon for a majority, like the first maybe year and a half that it was open. And right. it was really creepy. They had his clothes he was killed in. Oh, whoa. Cylinder. And it was like in ta- like it was in like, you know, a be- uh, yellow like police bag, but they had his Whoa. glasses on display with the mud and blood on it. It was <gasps> the creepiest, like Whoa. most surreal Ugh. thing to ever see ever. But That's crazy. Yeah, but you could spend a lot of time in there. Like I, said, oh, I was gonna say that been. my I my point was it. that I've been there five times and I can still go in there and lose myself for three hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, I want to go so bad. It sounds so cool. It's the coolest thing ever. It's, um, yeah, it's really awesome. <laughs> definitely take some time in Cleveland that day and go. It's carve out like four hours because yeah. it's worth it. You but where it. in where in Nashville are you playing? And are you gonna be here for a bit or are you playing and then like getting in the van and driving right out? I think we're gonna be I, there for like two days. Two days, I think. Awesome. I think we're playing at um a place called the High Watt. Okay, yeah, I know the name. I haven't honestly been out to any shows here because there's we moved here in end of February oh, yeah, and there yeah. hasn't been anything happening. So yeah, so yeah, we're uh, excited for that. It'll be our first show since March 2020. <laughs> that, oh, that's gonna be your very first show too. Yeah, oh, our yeah. first we did like a roof um like release show for we're all gonna die over here as contribution. Here's our contribution. <laughs> um and but that was like for our friends and stuff so it's our first time back in like a venue which will be really exciting awesome i'm coming so yes. <laughs> yeah i need to make sure to make a note on my calendar here but that's so cool i would love to come out and and, and see the show and especially if you're going to be here for a couple of days that's awesome yeah oh yeah <laughs> uh, well i'm going to be there i'm going to mark in my calendar right now um and thank you both so much for doing this interview. I appreciate well, it. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. It was so it. fun. This is so cool. Uh, I have one more question before I let you both go. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Ooh, that's a good question. 
I always say, I think the best advice I can give is literally, okay, there's a couple of things. Now <laughs> I'm thinking about it, let me back check. Um, first step, I think, learn production, like whatever DAW you wanna open up. If you wanna use like Logic or even GarageBand, anything, just get your hands on the software and learn it. And just so that you have that vocabulary to say what you want to mm. make. Um, I feel like a lot of times if you're in with a producer, it's very easy for them to start like overtaking um, on your song. So I think that might be some of the best advice I can give is like, just learn it, learn the vocabulary, learn the things you can do production wise, recording wise, so that you can create that sound you want. The second yeah. advice is just like, keep going. <laughs> Don't stop it. Um, I think that's what I tell myself all the time too. And that's gotten me through like the hardest times um when i felt like we're not going anywhere when i questioned like is this something that's gonna happen for us it's, it's like just keep going because if you stop it's not going to mm. i love that i would say those two things also <laughs> like <laughs> <You know. laughs> so, uh, i think in terms of learning production i think it's so important for like women in music to learn production just so that if you're in a session with men, because there are a lot of men in the music industry, you have the vocabulary to assert sort of your vision in it, which I feel like it's very easy to be overlooked or overridden in a studio as a woman. That's something I've learned. And I feel like it's, I feel much more confident and like able to speak in those spaces when I have like the right vocabulary and sort of feel like I know what I'm talking about in technical terms, you know, mm -hmm. even if most of it is like, for show too just to be like take me seriously like i know what i want um i feel like that was so important and yeah don't give up <laughs> like <laughs> i feel like if this is what you love to do and I, like i truly can't imagine doing anything else and so even if i'm like 70 and still being like i'm gonna make it next year like i'll be happy because i get to do it so I feel like just keep going. Like some days are going to suck, but also some days are going to be really fun. I love that. I just want to comment on something you said, because it, what frustrates me in this in music is that a, a man can just buy or, you know, buy a Mac and have GarageBand on. And it's like, I'm a producer now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And women don't do that. No, they, no. I feel like you don't get the respect and it just bugs me. No. <laughs> I just want yeah, to say I that. I feel like to be <laughs> a male and a producer is way more casual than to like step into a space and be like, yeah, I'm a female producer. Like, I feel like you really have to show that you know your shit to get respect. You do. And, it's, and uh, yeah, that's I, what I've learned. Yeah, I could. And I can see that. And somebody told me that and I had never thought of it. And then I was like, that's a great point because like I said, I, I have garage band on my Mac and I can tell people, Oh yeah, I'm a producer. I know how to throw like the these fake drum beats together. And, <laughs> you know, I got this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I've been in radio enough to be able to figure out how to use EQ and this. And it's like, yeah. well, I, I have no clue what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just wanted to comment on that. Bring it